Hey guys, this is Miss Morgan, and in this set of notes, we're going to talk about something called the cell theory. So if you will head over to page 29 in your interactive notebook, go ahead and title the page the cell theory, and we're going to set this page up for Cornell notes. So we need a horizontal line across the top of the page, and then about a third of the way over we need a vertical line. All right, so let's start with our essential question. And our essential question is what you should be able to answer by the time you leave class. So our essential question for the cell theory is, what are the three principles of the cell theory? Now, theory is one of our vocab words that you need to know. And that's a word that's thrown around a lot in our society today. If you go on any news channel, you'll hear them talking about theories. So we're going to start by talking about what is a theory. Again, like I said, the word theory is one of our vocab words. So make sure that you know what theory means in science. So sometimes when you're out just talking to people, you'll hear them say things like, oh yeah, I have a theory that, or yeah, it's just a theory but, and then they proceed to talk about whatever it is that they're talking about. Well, outside of science, what those people really mean is, I have a guess that, or I think that this is the case, but they really don't have any evidence to back that up. Science, on the other hand, a theory is a piece of um, an explanation of something that happens that has lots of evidence behind it, lots of scientific testing through the scientific processes. And so a theory is elevated almost to the level of a law. So in science, a theory doesn't mean a guess. A theory is an explanation with lots of evidence to back it up. So let's write that down. So a theory is an explanation Of a natural event. Natural event is just something like um, how organisms adapt to their environment or how cells are put together, like cell theory that we're talking about now. So it's an explanation of a natural event based on many years of repeated testing. So lots of experiments with lots of evidence. So a theory is an explanation of a natural event based on many years of repeated testing and lots of evidence. I'm going to divide my page because now that we have a definition for a theory, let's get into talking about what is the cell theory. So there's three questions that by the time we finish talking about the cell theory, we should be able to answer. Number one, does everything have cells? Number two, what do we mean by cell? In other words, what are cells used for? And last but not least, where do cells come from? So let's start by talking about, does everything have cells? All right, so this is our first statement in the cell theory. And to illustrate this, we're gonna draw ourselves a picture. So I'm gonna draw myself a little human being here. And then I'm gonna zoom in on this human being 
And when I zoom in on that human being, I'm going to see a little structure that looks like this. And this is a cell. So this picture is going to remind us that all living things have cells. If you're not sure about what makes something living, go back to page 28 in your notebook and you have your seven characteristics of life there. If you're looking at something, trying to figure out if it's living, ask yourself, does it meet all seven of those characteristics? If the answer is yes, it's living. If it's missing any one of those characteristics, it's non-living. So living things have cells. So humans have cells, frogs have cells, bacteria are a single cell but they're still a cell. However, things like a glue bottle or a suitcase or remote control, those things are non-living, so they don't have cells. So that answers our question, does everything have cells? No, not everything does, just living organisms. All right, second statement of the cell theory answers our second question, what are cells used for? So I'm gonna draw myself another little picture here. So this is just my little froggy friend here. I'm gonna stick his tongue out so he can catch something. And my little froggy friend is gonna be sitting next to a pyramid of bricks. Now, in order to build this pyramid, we had to put one brick on top of the next. So a pyramid has a lot of structure and the pyramid is going to be made of smaller things. Well, this is to remind us that cells are the basic unit of structure. So living organisms are built from cells and we've got the, the tongue of the frog sticking out because that's doing something. It's gonna be catching food in this case. So cells are also the basic unit of function. Living organisms can't do stuff without their cells. So we could also say that cells are the smallest unit of life, just like we saw in our levels of organization. So what are cells used for? Cells are used to build organisms and to help organisms function correctly. Our last question is where do cells come from? <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry about that. All right, for this one, I'm gonna draw a little picture here. I'm just gonna draw a little dot. You could actually draw another cell again, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna draw a dot and just color that in. And that's gonna represent our cell. And then the two dots I drew, I'm gonna draw some arrows from them. And I'm gonna break them down into four new dots. So looking at this picture, what do you see happening to our little pink cells? Did you say that they're dividing? That's exactly where other cells come from. So the fancy science way of saying this is all cells are derived from pre-existing cells. Really? That's just a fancy way of saying that cells come from other cells that already are present. So we could say that cells come from other cells. Another way of saying that is that cells make more cells. So where do cells come from? They divided from the cells that came before them and they divided from the cells that came before them and so on and so forth. All right, so for the activity that you're doing today, you're gonna to be exploring what is inside of a cell. Now we're gonna talk about these things a little bit later on this week in class. But before you start your activity, I do want to let you know that there are two types of cells that you need to be aware of. There are cells that are called prokaryotic cells, and there are cells called eukaryotic. <clears throat> 